Uh, Councilmember Trayon White. I uh, thank you. I want to thank you, uh, Chairman Minnison, um, for working to try to do something righteous with this budget. Um, I think we still have a long way to go. Um, it has been said, and I often quote it, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Leaders are meant to serve others. As members of the council, we have a huge responsibility. I know that each member is passionate about their constituents and priorities, but as a district, you must look past the rhetoric. The district shows its priority providing funding. As we follow our funding choices, we show our residents as a government what we really care about. On a more positive note, I'm pleased that the budget contains a few items that support residents that have the greatest needs. The Housing Production Trust Fund budget language continues to support 50% of the funds were redirected to the households with a stream of low income. UDC Law will be able to expand its clinical research in a pilot format. Um, some close relatives can receive support for caring for children that may otherwise come into foster care, etc., etc. On the other hand, the uniform per student funding formula for public schools was enhanced from $10,658 per student FY19 to $10,980 per student FY20. However, the increased funding is still based on student base and depending on the snapshot when the census is taken, uh, schools may come up short. As a result, school in Ward 8, schools in Ward 8 have a shortcoming of millions of dollars. And so we have far more work to do. I want to thank my colleagues for working to get this, uh, get it, get it up. But it doesn't speak to the issue that we've talked about about the racial inequities facing uh, blacks and people of color in the District of Columbia, especially east of the Anacostia River. On that note, along with Council Members Nadeau, Silverman, Grasso, Robert White, Todd, Allen, and now Anita Bonds, correct? All right, there we go. Got one more. Um, I'm offering an amendment to reestablish an academic affiliation agreement with Howard University and the Eastern Hospital. Can I get some more time, Ch Chairman? Uh, without objection. Thank you. Howard University School of Medicine was moved from participating in the East End Hospital with the repeal of the East End Health Equity Amendment Act of 2018. At the time of the passage of the East End Hospital, I was informed that without these provisions, there will be no prospects for a new hospital. They will be operated by George Washington Hospital or University Health Services. As a result, I offer this amendment to establish an academic affiliation with agreement with Howard University. I continue to support Howard to have access to the new hospital on the East End. As we have seen, UHS or University Health Services have accepting conditions that it previously stated were un un unacceptable. I believe that we must continue to negotiate to ensure that Howard is included in this hospital. This amendment does have a fiscal impact uh, state does not have a fiscal impact statement, um, and so I want to introduce that today in hopes to get support of my colleagues to ensure that the hospital in Washington D.C. that educate more doctors of color of, of any university in the United States has the opportunity to participate in the darkest, blackest part of Washington D.C. in Ward Eight and Ward Seven. And so I urge equity and participation for my colleagues to ensure that we can get docs of color east of Anacostia River. Thank you.